I don't do intros. How you guys doing today? I'm doing all right today. Uh, today I have something uh, a little bit exciting. It is my first uh, remade build that I have done, I guess. Um, if you guys don't know, I ended up losing all of my old builds. And uh, the first one I ever decided to remake was this one. It is my Moonlight Knight character. Previously, my old build was just, uh, he was level 125, I think, and he focused a lot on moon-related things like the Dark Moon Great Sword, Adula's Moon Blade, the Night Sorceries, the Full Moon Spells, and of course, the Moon Veil, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I say that because it's, you know, you know, it's the Moon Veil. I only really use it because it has the fucking name Moon in the title. Um, here, here's a nice little edit for you guys. Um, so something I'm trying out with this video is I'm incorporating more editing skills into my content making. Uh, you guys can tell me if you guys like it or not. It's just a little something extra that you guys can look at while you're listening to me talk about builds and whatnot. Uh, would love the input. Anyway, this uh, this iteration of the Moonlight Knight is uh, not level 125, he's level 166 and the, uh, the theory behind that level is that you will hit people who are in meta range and also people who have gone over 200 if you're 166. Um, that is not my theory, it's just a theory that I heard. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out for a little bit on this character, I might eventually take him to 200, I don't know yet. Um, but yeah. The reason why I want to keep him at this level is because uh, when the DLC comes out, uh, you know, people are going to play the game again. And let's be honest, most of us who legitly finished the game, um, we ended up around level 140, 150, right? That's what level I ended on, was 140 at least. And I think most people pretty much had that same experience if you didn't get like, uh, you know, runes milled over for you or something like that. Then you probably ended around 140, 150. That, that you know, that, I think that's the general consensus of uh, the levels. Uh, so yeah, I want to keep this guy around that level for the DLCs for when they come out. I might take him 200 eventually. If I do, there will be a video about it. Uh, but this build is slightly different now. It 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 uh you know it's a higher level, so it has more stats to work with, and also. Um, I've went ahead and done some things to make the build better. Uh, one thing I added, one spell I added, I used most of the Night Sorceries before. I used uh, Night Shard, Night Comet, Adula's Moonblade, stuff like that. But I added another Night Sorcery into the mix. Um, it's Eternal Darkness, which is a spell not many people run for <laughs> probably a lot of good reasons. For one, it takes a little bit too long to cast. And also, it doesn't last very long, and it takes a, probably a little bit too much FP. This guy had balls of steel, by the way. He, he fucking came back to me after I murdered his friend. Um, but it's a really cool spell, and something that I found out in this video, right here, in this clip right here. Um, it doesn't work on Comet Azura. If you guys don't know what Eternal Darkness does, it absorbs spells. As you can see, it's absorbing this from the flies right there. It doesn't work on Comet Azura, which is insane because I stood there in the Comet Azura thinking that the Eternal Darkness would suck it up and it didn't. Uh, but yeah, this is a Moonveil clip. It's a pretty dirty one too. I'm, uh, every Moonveil clip you're going to see, I'm a little bit embarrassed about it, alright? <laughs> because. Like I said, the only reason why I even use this sword is because it has the, <laughs> the word moon in the name. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't touch it. But I gotta stay true to the character and, and stuff like that, right? He's a, he's a knight who likes moon things. A, a moonlight knight, if you will. Um, but yeah, what was I saying before? Oh yeah, the things I added. Um, so, another thing I added to the build is... I am using the Spike Cracked here along with the Axe Talisman for the Dark Moon Great Sword, combined with um, Alexander's Shard and Godfrey's Icon. It boosts the damage of the uh, of the weapon art by quite a bit. The Ash of War, to say it's not Dark Souls 3. Come on now, we're talking about Ashes of War here. Um, 
So what that does is it doesn't it doesn't boost the, uh, the the wave attack. So if they get hit by just the wave, the axe talisman and the spike cracked here won't boost the wave attack, but it'll boost the blade. So if they get hit by the blade, uh, the damage is it's fucking crazy. If you, as you can see, I've been one shotting people in this video just with that. Um, so that's that's one thing I added along with eternal darkness to this build. I used to say before that this build wasn't my favorite. I think it is, but I don't know because the the last build I made right before I lost all of my builds was the uh, the Reverend of America, and I was really really liking that build. And I started to think that that might be my favorite build, um, but remaking this build it really helped me remember why I like this build so much. Um, it, it's great, man. The Dark Moon Great Sword is an underrated weapon, and I wish more people would use it. Eternal Darkness getting a ton of value right there. I don't know where that guy was, by the way. He just kind of popped out of nowhere. Um, a rare two, two invader clip right here. Uh, yeah. Something I thought about doing the other day um, on this character, actually, is I wanted to get a clip of me using the Taunter's Tongue to get two invaders while I summoned a hunter and it would be a 2v2 in the moonlight altar and I thought that would be really really sick um, and, and you know thematic and aesthetic for the character um, but I killed the dragon there so I guess I can't get invaded there <laughs> it's not exactly ganking because it's only a 2v2 right and uh most people who use the taunter's tongue and the gank and stuff like that what they do is uh They'll wait until they have like at least two friends with them, either one friend and a hunter or two phantoms. And then what they'll do is they'll pop the uh, the taunter's tongue. And then they'll turn it off once they get one invader into the world just so they can gank them. Um, which is something that I wish they would take out of the game. I feel like if you use the taunter's tongue to get invaded, um, you that item needs to stay active until the invaders are gone, right? That's how it should have been, and uh, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, there's all kinds of weird bugs with invaders nowadays, to be honest. Uh, if you guys don't know, there's a, a really strange bug in the game right now. Um, where If you use the uh, the furled finger, or the, whatever it's called, the phantom furled finger, uh, and you uh, teleport somewhere else that's not your spawn, uh, then the phantoms won't be downscaled anymore. <laughs> it turns like a, a level 700 into a level 700, even though they shouldn't be level 700, if that makes sense. Um, anyway guys, here are all my stats, equipment, everything I used in this video while making this video and whatnot. If you guys like this kind of content, this kind of build content, this kind of PvP content, uh, be sure to subscribe and stuff like that because I will be doing more of it. I need to remake all of my builds. I need to make new builds and I, I will get to it, I promise. Uh, with that being said, guys, fare thee well. Take care of yourselves. Have a good one. Peace out.